The Siamese crocodiles are the rarest crocodile in the world. Hi, what's going on adventure buddies? My name is Brandon Ringstad and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you for asking, keeping me in your thoughts. My Bell's palsy is pretty much all healed. There's some times where I feel a little bit stiff, but you really can't notice and it's, I'm feeling a lot, lot better. Thank you so much. Please stick around to the very end to hear about this month's charity opportunity. Today we're going to the slow moving Cambodian waters to discover the Siamese crocodile. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Crocodilus siamensis are known as Siamese crocodiles. These animals have a hilarious scientific name. It literally translates into pebble worm originating from Siam. <laughs> That's awesome. They sound so much less intimidating when you think of them as a pebble worm. That is a good thing. We will find out why later. Siamese crocodiles can be found naturally in Cambodia, Laos, Indonesia, Ma Malaysia, Thailand, Myanmar, and Brunei. This species was thought to be extinct as recently as the year 2000. They were rediscovered in the Cardamom Mountains in Cambodia. Siamese crocodiles are a freshwater crocodile that prefer slow moving water, including streams, lakes, marshes, bogs, and rivers. They prefer water near land and vegetation. That way they can lie motionless to sleep or catch prey. They are a cold-blooded reptile that need to haul out of the water on occasion to absorb heat from the sun. Other than this brief bit of information, little is known about wild Siamese crocodile. So how am I going to capture this feeling in my painting? Well, I want this to be a calm but fascinating painting. I don't want my background to be too busy. I want the focus to be on the juvenile crocodile. Once I decide on the features that I want to include, I start with the farthest things and work my way forward. I use a technique with three steps to it. Blocking in phase, modeling, and detail. Blocking in phase, I get general colors and feels. I use large brushes to put down thin, loose brush strokes. Once I have that, I can move on to modeling. This lets me choose the right value and color for my painting. I move to smaller brushes and start adding texture to the painting. During the modeling phase is also when I set my darks. Let's move on to our next section of the adventure. This is where we discover the physical appearance and some behaviors of the animals. I don't know a ton of info on crocodiles. I know fish and marine mammal biology because I studied it in college. But we never got the opportunity to study reptile anatomy. Let's discover it together. They are a mid-sized crocodile. They have a broad, flat head with sharp teeth, eyes, and nostrils that are high on the head, a cylindrical body, two forelimbs with four digits, two hind limbs with five digits, and a tapered tail that is the same length as their body and head together. Oh yeah, and they are covered in many thick scales for camouflage and protection. Adults grow to lengths of three to three and a half meters, which is roughly 10 feet long. There are, some, there are some hybrids that grow larger, but I am not counting those. Their eyes and nose need to be high on their head to keep a low profile while in the water. They don't want to be seen while sneaking up on prey. They have a powerful set of jaws lined with sharp teeth used for crushing and grabbing prey. The shape of their jaw tells a lot about what the crocodiles eat. Since it is a broad profile, it means that they are general and diverse in their diet. A key feature to look out for when identifying the Siamese crocodile is a protruding ridge behind the each eye. Crocodiles use their limbs to walk around and howl onto land. They primarily use their powerful body and tail to propel them through the water. It is a serpentine movement. Their tail has scales that create a ridge on each side of the body. 
This flows backward to the tail and zippers into one row of scales. Now I say it zippers because it looks like a partially zipped zipper. These crocodiles are olive green to green in color. They have a fun tan to yellow and dark banded pattern on their tail. Juveniles have the same pattern but are a bright yellow and black to dark green. I couldn't find out why they are so brightly colored. It might be predator avoidance. So typically animals with bright yellow or bright coloration are poisonous. Since there is such a limited amount of research done on wild Siamese crocodiles, I couldn't find much information on behavior. I did find out that females lay eggs in mounds of leaves and dirt in April to May. They lay between 15 and 50 eggs. The older females lay more eggs. They are ready to mate at 10 years old and the eggs take 80 days to hatch. One thing that I found interesting was that the females do have a form of parental involvement. They guard the eggs and help the eggs reach the surface when they hatch. She digs them up and scoops them into her mouth and walks them to the water. Whether she stays with the young beyond that is not known. It is also, it is also known that the sex of the eggs is determined by the temperature. The nest is temperature graded having cooler eggs at the bottom and warmer on the top. I couldn't find out which temperature means male or female crocodiles. So that means that all crocodiles on the top layer are one sex and the rest of the air are the other. And that's pretty cool. Let's get into our next segment of the adventure. What do the Siamese crocodiles eat and how are they doing? They eat small fish, amphibians, snakes, and some small mammals. Remember how I said their jaw was broad and perfect for general diet? This is true. They have a powerful jaw. It would hurt if they bit you, but they don't go after large game or humans. There are only four cases of Siamese crocodile attacks on humans. One was a female protecting her nest from poachers, Two were in self-defense from men harassing one, and the other is unidentified and very vague from 1902. So it doesn't count in my book. These crocodiles interact with people sometimes, but they tend to be chill dudes. Sometimes when farmers breed them with larger and more aggressive crocodiles, you should be cautious. So how are they doing? The IUCN Red List has them listed as critically endangered. In fact, these animals were thought to be extinct up until the year 2000. Doing a population count of these animals is difficult. They tend to be remote and hard to get. There is an estimated population of 250 to 5,000 individuals in the wild. I think the number is closer to 5,000 personally. I saw data supporting numbers over 1,000 in Cambodia alone. So why are these animals so endangered? It is primarily habitat loss for agriculture, poachers, crocodile farms, and construction of dams. Hey, we got to hear about other animals impacted by cross river dams. Let's dive deeper. Rice farms and agriculture are good things for growing populations of people. It teaches these people to work hard and make a living for themselves. But it means they are turning all or most of the land that they own into farmland. This is reducing the diversity of the land around the crocodile habitat. Poaching of a rare animal is always a problem. When something is rare, people pay a ton of money for it. And that increases the demand for the item or animal. Their blood is antimicrobial and their skin is used to make products. It is common for people to breed Siamese crocodiles in farms. The problem arrives when too many wild animals are used to restock the farm gene pool. These farmed animals are sold to people to be used in aquariums and for products. The last one is habitat loss due to large cross river dams. These dams create energy via hydropower, but they alter the flow of the river and ruin habitat. One way we can fix this is by creating dams that don't block a river, but capture the lost energy in a curve or bend in the river. 
These animals are special and need our help in order to survive. Let's move on to our last segment of the adventure. What was my personal encounter with a Siamese crocodile and how am I finishing my painting? By this point, I am on to my detail phase. I am using small brushes to place paint in little details. I am also starting to get into my highlights. I have my midtones and dark set. I can start adding titanium white and bright vivid colors to my highlight sections. This is where the realism starts to come in. It ties the painting all together. For a while, I reach a phase people lovingly refer to as the ugly phase. Early on in a painting, this ugly phase deters people from continuing. They don't know how to keep pushing forward and adding details, so they give up. Every painting has an ugly phase. For me, I think it comes in between the blocking in and modeling phase. But the detail phase is when the painting turns a corner and you can see how it's coming along. I like the detail phase. It lets me play with my brushes and add thicker paint to catch real world light. I save pure titanium white for tiny bits of reflected light. Don't overdo this part. It is easy to overdo pure titanium white. I work in sections and rely on my reference photo for the whole painting, especially here. I spend more time looking at my reference photo than my painting. Also, don't think you have to replicate every detail in the reference photo. I don't. I use details that are similar and give the idea, but it isn't an exact copy of my reference photo. Okay, what was my personal experience with the Siamese crocodile? I saw this juvenile crocodile at the Odyssey in Scottsdale, Arizona. I thought it was an alligator when I first saw it. While doing research to discover what it was, I determined it was a Siamese crocodile. I thought for sure I was wrong, because of how rare it was in the wild. But it turns out the aquariums like using farmed crocodiles in order to educate the public about endangered species like this. This little crocodile was in a large tank where you could see above the water and below. It allowed you to see the animal no matter where it was located swimming, sleeping, or sunning. There was, a heart, there was a large heat light above the tank, so the crocodile could warm itself. This little crocodile was just floating like a log on the surface of the water. It wasn't moving or doing anything, which is typical crocodile behavior. I love seeing it. I was with someone who wanted me to take a picture of it and feature it here for you. I can see why she wanted me to feature it. I was going to take a picture no matter what, but I'm glad I got to know the Siamese crocodile a little bit better. In this painting, I wanted to capture the stillness, the presence of this animal. Even though it was a juvenile, I wanted it to still have a feeling of power. As the details come into focus, I will say, see you later alligator, after a while crocodile. The Siamese crocodile, that is. There we have it, this painting is finished. Uh, what do you think? I think it turned out really nice. It's a different style than what I'm used to. Uh, I really like how it turned out. It looks so realistic, very cute. It's a cute little crocodile. I really enjoy how it turned out. If you would like to, please subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified when I post new content. I do my best to post new content every other weekend. This month, I am supporting autism awareness and mental health. All right, so the, the charity that I am working with is the Steve Aoki Foundation. He's a fellow YouTuber who's gotten into Pokemon, so he has a, a charity going on right now, and I'll leave a link in the description. So if you donate, then it'll help people with autism and research with autism, autism awareness, different things like that. 
You also have an opportunity to win a Pokemon poster that they made with 18 other creators. Now there's only there's only 36 in the world. Each each of the uh, each, each of the content creators gets one, but you as a fan also might get one. So I have family members who are autistic, and it just means that they perceive and feel the world a little bit differently than we do. Now they might have auditory or vision or touch sensitivity, and that's okay, right? They're no different than, uh, than you or I, they just have heightened senses. So sometimes they may feel a little bit more stressed out about the world, but they really have amazing gifts. And I know that people with autism are subject to bullying and harassment, and I want that to stop, so I want our community to be a voice for those people who have autism or who know people who have autism so that we can be a beacon of light and hope for these people. They're just people, they're trying to do the best that they can just like you and me. Did you know that portions of all of my sales goes towards charity? So it's true, that's kind of why I do these monthly charity opportunities. I want to keep it mixed up and fresh, but I also want it to be causes that are close to me. And I hope that you can get on board with that as well. So I donate to charity just so that I can help the world be a little bit better and show that there are people out there that really care. Now, if you want to support this community so that I can keep making these adventures for you, I have a sale going on right now for another week, 20% off on some of my items, and I have new items up on my website. I sell the original art that you see me make, so I sell, my, with my originals, I have either pearlescence, uh, glitter, or glass bead gel medium on these pieces of art so that they can play well with light. So I offer two, op two options. I have a limited edition, which is as close to the original as possible while still being a print, and I also, uh, offer, and I also offer an unlimited print. These don't have anything special, but they are hand signed. Now prices run $12, 6 and $3 a linear inch, uh, respectively, and just and finding the linear inch is very easy. It's just you take the height, add the width, and then multiply by 12, 6 or 3. But with this sale that I'm running, there are opportunities to save some money. I just have extra inventory that I couldn't sell due to the pandemic, and I just want to help you guys and help the community and help help out charity. Now I run I now I so I get my prints through Feather and Fox Print Company. They they're located on Whidbey Island. They're wonderful people and they have really high quality. So if you're supporting this channel, you're supporting our adventures, the research that goes into it, the ability for me to go see these animals, you're helping support this channel. You're also supporting a local business as well as charity. So you're helping three or more organizations. Thank you so much for going on this adventure with me. Spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon, and I will see you in our next adventure.